Welcome back, friends, to another amazing TechBound interview. In this conversation, I speak to Arij Abu Ali, technical SEO from London and founder of the group Women in Tech SEO. Women in Tech SEO actually has over 1,400 women who support each other along the career and provide a safe space. And I couldn't imagine to have this conversation at a better time as we lean up and fight against inequality and discrimination of any kind. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, to wherever you listen to podcast, and to the TechBound newsletter to not miss out on content like this in the future. And now, without further ado, please enjoy this conversation with Arij Abu Ali. Three, two, one. Arij Abu Ali, welcome to the show. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And yeah, I got excited when I saw your message come through. Uh, really looking forward to talking about something that I'm super passionate about. Likewise, likewise. Yeah, it's been really easy with you. And I feel uh, a lot of uh, respect for what you do, especially, uh, of course, in your role as founder of Women in Tech SEO. Um, I think that's a project that fits especially perfectly into the context of the time right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm based in the US and I've seen, we've all kind of seen in the news, the, um, the outrages against inequality. And I think that this group and this project is a perfect push in the right direction. So I want to start at the very beginning and just plain uh, ask you, what is the story behind Women in Tech SEO? How did it come to be? Yeah, definitely. So we kicked things off a bit over a year ago. Um, I think it must have been May 2019. We just celebrated our, our one year anniversary quite recently. Um, and it was more around towards the start of last year, I was just starting to feel a little bit demotivated generally with the work I was doing. Uh, I've been doing tech SEO for the past seven years or so, uh, but I wasn't too sure if this was something I wanted to continue doing. I didn't feel like I had a support network um, or people that I was comfortable enough to kind of share some of the questions I have. Um, I always heard about all of these exclusive SEO groups uh, that, you know, not anyone can be invited to them. Some people are there, other people aren't. Um, so that always made me feel a little bit on the outs. And at the same time, I was feeling quite nervous to ask questions on Twitter because I was always worried that some people might be like, whoa, you know, you're an SEO manager and you do not know the answer of that. How is that possible? Um, so it's kind of like all of these different things. And I tried to search for different groups where I would feel comfortable or so forth, but I couldn't really find one. And that's when I kind of came up with the idea of wouldn't it be really nice if we have a group that's more around, you know, no judgment, everyone needs to be really kind, we'd have specific values that are set. And I myself have been involved in women communities previously, and I found them a really safe space to be a part of, uh, because I feel that we face a lot of the same challenges, we have a lot of similar stories, and there are things that we can help each other and learn from one another. And so that's kind of how it came upon it. I, I put out a tweet and I was like, yeah, women, women in tech SEO rejoice. We now have a group. And I just started like a Facebook group and we had a hundred people join uh, within the first week, which was really exciting. Um, and a lot of it was also about, you know, not only being able to connect with other people who are within London or UK, but also more on a global basis. Um, yeah, and then from that, we kind of decided, well, it would also be quite nice if we can start having meetups um, and we can start speaking in some of them and sharing our knowledge. Um, and it just started kind of growing from there. And today you have 1,400 members on Facebook, 830 mm -hmm. members on Slack. You have weekly and monthly meetups. It grew to this movement almost, I would say. It's a, it's a huge and very, very successful project. So tell me a bit about the very, very beginnings. How did you grow that project and that group? Uh, what were the first couple of steps when you decided that you want to do this? So one of the very first things I did was, uh, you know, come up with some ground rules or what I'd like to call values. Uh, so we had rules for the group and interacting on the group. And these are more about, you know, um, this is a safe area. What's shared here needs to stay here. Uh, you know, no, no spam allowed, uh, no bullying of any sort, no discrimination, things along those lines. And then there was also our core values, which are more around to be kind, uh, to, to be a safe environment, to, to not pass on any judgment um, and a lot of it was was really trickling on the fact that we wanted to welcome absolutely any woman 
who or anyone who identified as a woman who uh, is interested in technical SEO. We, we don't simply want to be a hub of people who are super advanced tech SEO experts. It's more about anyone at all who has even any form of interest in tech SEO is more than welcome to be to be a part of the group. So we have a lot of people actually who do content, who do PPC, who do digital PR, who, who are part of the group, uh, but because they work with tech SEOs or uh, potentially they are interested to learn more about tech SEO, they're, they're more than welcome. And I would say in terms of like how it grew, it's just, it was kind of about like having one project after the other. So it, it spun off initially as a Facebook group. And then we were like, well, let's start to do meetups and maybe the very first meetup was like 15 people in a coffee shop in London. Uh, but then afterwards it was like, oh, wouldn't it be nice actually if we also have do some talks? And the whole purpose of the talks was to um, have people who don't normally speak, who want to start their career. So it was like, well, this would be a really nice way for you to speak because it's a very friendly group. It's a small setting. Um, you know, you, you don't have to be nervous. It's not like one of your big conferences. It would be nice for you to kind of kickstart here. And then it just kind of started one thing after the other. After a while, I realized a lot of people are in Facebook fans. So I started a Slack community. So we welcomed a lot of like Facebook haters on there. Um, we started like a Twitter channel where the main focus was to kind of amplify women and work that they're doing. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of, it was just one thing after the other really. It started, or it seems to me as, it started as a safe space for women. And then it turned into this, space where women can develop their skills and refine their skills. And you mentioned public speaking. Um, and, and so I think that's very wonderful. So you decided to also add a mentorship program to that. Can you tell me about the mentorship program? Yeah, so this is brand new. We're very excited about it. Um, we are literally kicking off this August. Uh, so this is going to be the first cohort that we run. Uh, it's going to be a two month cohort. And the reason being is that I feel within the group normally, a lot of people tend to mentor others simply by answering questions they have. Uh, but I wanted a more formal setting for it where, you know, someone can feel like I've got a mentor who I can bounce ideas off, who I can learn more from, who can help me and guide me into what I can do next. Um, and I think it's helpful for both sides because when you mentor someone, there's a lot of things that you learn yourself by doing the mentoring. And also on the other hand, when you are being mentored by someone, um, this is really the way that we can all develop most. SEO isn't something that we tend to learn in university or so on. And usually if we're in our first year, we tend to feel a little bit confused, unsure about what's the next path we want to go to. So having a mentor can really give us some guidance on that. Um, so we kicked off a mentorship program and we had over 200 mentors and over 200 100 mentees uh, fill the form within must have been like five days, um, which was crazy because we initially planned to have it open for a whole month. And then we we're like, okay, okay, this is going to get a little bit out of hand. So we had to close it much earlier. Uh, but our plan is to do the first cohort for two months, get a lot of feedback from both mentors and mentees, see how it went. And then based off of that, have it as a more regular, uh, potentially three month program that we can keep running on a, on a regular basis. Mentorship in SEO is just so important. I myself benefited so much in my career from people who taught me things, who elevated me, supported me, helped me. And I think because SEO is such a weird intersection between art mm -hmm. and science, and there's so much uncertainty in our field, it is yeah. even more important for you know, uh, people to mentor you, help you and teach you. And one thing I'm curious about is how do you select your mentors? Can anybody become a mentor? And how do you pair them with the mentees? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So as with every single initiative we do with Women in Tech SEO, it's super uh, inclusive. So anyone who wants to apply can put themselves forward. And I think that's something we've always done from day one. Anyone who wants to join the group is more than welcome to. Anyone who wants to submit themselves on the Community Speakers Hub is welcome to. Anyone who wants to do an interview is welcome to. We always have very transparent, open Google Forms that absolutely anyone can go in and fill because we don't want to go and select specific people based on you know some ideas that we have on these people being the good ones or so on. Anyone should be able to apply if they're interested. So we had quite an extensive form uh, with Naomi Sanderson, like she helped me tons with the mentorship program uh, where we wanted to look at different fields within SEO that someone could potentially be interested in. So we split it into both SEO and soft skills. So with SEO, we asked 
the mentor and the mentee, you know, what would you like to mentor on? And with the mentee, what would you like to be mentored on? So it was things like technical SEO, local SEO, content, digital PR. So we opened it up quite a lot. And then in terms of the soft skills, it was things on leadership, strategy, negotiation, freelancing, consultancy. Um, and there was also an option of, well, I, I only want to do soft skills or I only want to do SEO skills. And that's kind of how it worked out. So it made it much easier then to match people up based on that. So for example, you can have a mentee who is looking primarily for technical SEO and leadership. And you would have a mentor who is supporting uh, or interested to provide those. But then because it's global, the first thing we had to do was split them up by countries to try to get them in similar time zones. Um, because we had mentors and mentees from all, all around the world. Like we had US and UK and we had Mexico and we had Brazil and we had, um, we had India, we had Nigeria, we had Egypt. We, it was all, all around. And so it was really important for us to at least try to as much as we can match people within similar time zones so that it's not difficult for them uh, to interact with one another. And just out of, out of curiosity, what is the skill that most people want to be mentored in? Ah, uh, that's, a, that's a really, really good question. I think because we are quite drawn towards technical SEO. So from an SEO perspective, uh, that was the one that was definitely the winner. A lot of people pick technical SEO as their main SEO skill. But then from a soft skill, uh, we had a lot of ones around public speaking and also a lot of ones around uh, strategy, leadership and strategy. That makes a lot of sense. These are not easy skills to develop, or let's put it this way, they, they, they take a while uh, and a lot of practice to, to get there. Um, but you also mentioned values and the, um, the importance of being an inclusive community. I wondered, how did you select those values? Um, some of them, I think, are very easy to get to. They're, they're very uh, clear, like being inclusive, like not, not excluding anyone, uh, and kindness as well. But I'm, I'm curious, was there some sort of a process where these values that you, um, that you clearly observed are lacking in the community or was there another process behind getting them? I don't think I went through such a big process to try to think of the values. They kind of came to me um, as I was introducing what our values were. I remember I wanted to introduce them like in a blog post when I first launched the website three months after the community had went live. And uh, it was just really easy for me to, to, to write them out. Um, I shared them on the groups and I asked you know, how do people feel about these being our main values? And a lot of people said that they related to them and they felt that they were very close to what we've been doing so far for the last three months. Um, maybe potentially it was something that I felt lacked a bit, especially the judgment-free area. That, that might be one where I know that personally I struggled with a little bit. Um, but other than that, they all felt quite natural, like things that we have been doing over the past three months. And so when I did the values three months down the line, it felt quite easy to, to know what they were. Can you tell me a bit more about the about your experience with judgment free zones? Maybe do you have any anecdotes or examples from your personal experience about that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm you know I'm a I'm a woman and I am a minority uh, and I like there there is something I always tend to talk about is the idea of potentially being labeled when you walk into a room because it's very easy to label you. Um, and so, you know, I, I felt it a lot specifically when I was agency side and we used to have like client pitches or I used to walk clients through like technical SEO implementation and recommendations. And it's interesting sometimes how clients perceive this or how they take it versus when my male, co my male white dude colleague would, you know, be the one who, who, who shares those, um, recommendations. And there is always a lot of questioning and there, there is always a lot of, um, oh, this might be too technical for you. Um, oh, I apologize if this is too technical. Oh, what this actually means is, and then they wind up explaining something that of course I already know. So, you know, just kind of your, your typical, um, biases, like unconscious biases that tend to exist in our everyday um, is, is, is very normal. In terms of uh, judgment free, I mean, yeah, I would say on Twitter, for example, when someone shares like a recent article they've done or so on, you always do notice that there, there tends to be more criticism when this is coming from, you know, a younger uh, person, uh, a, a woman, someone of diversity, you know, someone who's not that well known within the space they tend to get hit more with criticism or uh, things along the lines of, uh, oh, we don't really need to be doing Python, you know, oh, why is everyone talking about Python, right? And that type of stuff. 
but then on the other hand, you know, you, you get your, your well-known names, your well-known characters, your usual, you know, white dude personas, and then they share something and everyone's like, oh my God, this is amazing. You know, this is exactly what we want to be doing. So you definitely notice it. It is definitely within our industry. I feel what's getting better is that it's being called out more now. And, you know, it's, and it's something that people are speaking about more, which means that it is getting better over time, uh, but, but it is still happening. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with you and I can only imagine how frustrating it must be to, to, you know, see a lot of men's planning, a lot of bias and, and uh, criticism uh, that seems to be driven by uh, racial or gender stereotypes or any stereotype that you have and that you face. I actually wanted to speak about the current state of women in technical SEO, but before we do that, I would love to close out the the questions about the project in general with the long term goals. So, what is your long term vision for the for the group or for the for the movement? Uh, where do you want to take it? Do do I have a proper process in place? Probably not so much. I kind of go with what seems to be working more right now and what people seem to be wanting more of. Um, But in an ideal scenario, I feel because we are such a global community and we have people from all around the world within our Facebook and Slack communities, uh, but a lot of our meetups are uh, primarily within London, at least the physical ones that were happening before. I would love to start having different chapters across the world So, and this is a conversation I've had with a few people so far, but I need to really properly start working on it post COVID where we can have the New York chapter and we can have the Singapore chapter and, you know, we can have the Egypt chapter and and so on. I think that would be amazing. So to have like different chapter leads who are in charge of of the different um, physical meetups that tend to happen there. And then at the end of the day, our, our global community still lives virtually. Uh, but we are able to to have like mini chapters for more physical kind of interactions. What is the biggest obstacle to making that vision a reality? Um, to let go and to <laughs> to not be so much in control of everything and to not try to manage the every single step of everything. I mm-hmm. I have trouble asking for help and uh, and and I worry that. Um, I worry that it would lose its meaning over time. Um, it's so inclusive now. It's so safe. It's so, you know, there, it just, it doesn't, it, there's so much kindness in it. And I just worry that if I, if I lose control a little bit, I wouldn't be able to, um, you know, to know what's happening uh, here and there. So, yeah, I think, I think I probably need to work on that a little bit more, but I'm sure that over time, you know, um, yeah, I, I, hopefully we can, we can start working on something. Uh, you're talking to the right person here. <laughs> I very much know what it's like to wanting to be in control and yeah. having a hard time letting go. So I can very much relate to that. Um, but out of curiosity, where do you have the most members from uh, geographically right now? So definitely UK. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even have to look at the numbers. I'm pretty sure it's UK. And probably a big reason behind that is because we we have hosted so many meetups here. We've done about 12. We had the full day conference in March as well for International Women's Day. Um, so UK and possibly followed by US. Um, and then there's, we've got tons of people all, all, all around Europe. So we have a lot of people from Spain, a lot of people from, from Italy. Uh, yeah, but definitely UK. Got it. And so let's speak a little bit about the current state of women in technical SEO. Obviously, there are lots of protests for equality, against inequality right now, inequality of all sorts and kind, whether that's racial inequality, uh, gender inequality. And so I'm curious, what is the current situation that we find ourselves in? Like, can do you maybe have any numbers or a general overview of what the current state of women is? I mean, I, for my part, definitely know that women are unrepresented in technical SEO uh, and SEO probably in, in general, even though I'm not as sure even about the second one, right? I can speak for technical SEO, general SEO, I'm not even as sure, but I'm curious about, you know, your perspective and any, any facts and, and stats that you could share about that. I wouldn't be able to share like specific stats off the top of my head, but I, we, th- there is definitely lack of representation, specifically when it comes to technical SEO. This is something that you notice, especially when you look at speaker lineups. 
So if you have certain conferences and they've got these different tracks and you wind up going to the technical SEO room and you're like, yeah, I'm so excited about this track. And then it's like, nope, it's you, you just, there is no representation there. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy, right? Because here you go, we've got over 2000 members in who are interested in tech SEO who are women. So there's no reason why they aren't speaking in these conferences. So a lot of it is around the fact that we tend to rely on the names that we know. And I think this is on event organizers. They need to step up their game. They need to make sure they're not inviting the same people over and over again. They need to make sure that they have proper speaker pitches in place for every single conference they do to give people a fair chance to apply. Um, And they need to also actively reach out to ensure that there is diversity within their conferences. Um, It's only now that you're finally starting to see some conferences with like a 50-50 speaker lineup, still very, very, very rare. Uh, There are a lot of places where, you know, the majority of your conferences, they're shocking. You could have like an 80-20 lineup for like male to female, which is crazy. And then even then, when you try to go to the next layer, which is how diverse are your speakers, you might have very normal to have a full white lineup, which is which is crazy. The other thing in terms of work and in terms of in companies, what tends to happen is that you might have a lot of women in tech SEO or in SEO. But if you start looking at leadership or if you start looking at senior stakeholders, you don't find that many. So your heads of SEOs, your CMOs, your, you, you know, the, the, the more up the ladder you go, the less women you find, which is again, very, very problematic because what happens there? Like why, why is it that women tend to be kept in a box and men tend to go up the ladder, but women tend to, to stay within that same area. And of course, a, a lot of different factors probably come to play, you know, lack of promotion, things like uh, women having to go on maternity leaves and coming back, um, you know, be, be, being unable to, 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 to move up a ladder uh, tends to happen. But I, I think with companies, when you always talk about diversity and inclusion, I feel it's very important to not just look at stats in terms of you know, the gender split, but more about what that looks like on, on different levels across the company. Right. And I'm sure it's not because of a lack of talent. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that in, in technical SEO, you have lots of talented um, women, some of which I was able and lucky to, to interview on my podcast, but also l- many of, you know, uh, who I interact with on Twitter or just see online or, or see great content from. So is there an example of a conference that comes to mind that does this really well, that puts a big emphasis on uh, a diverse speaker lineup? Yeah, so I, yeah, with that question, I always refer to Search Love. Um, I think Search Love by Distilled, they they nail it and they nail it every time. Uh, just last year, their lineup was 50-50. Um, they, they always have community speaker slots, which I think are really important because that means that, and anyone can pitch and apply for those. So they encourage uh, people who are first time speakers to apply for that. And they don't just encourage them to apply, but they also give them coaching and mentoring and they help them with their topic and they help them with their presentation, which is, which is massive, which is really, really good. I know that Moscon as well, the, the recent one they've had was a 50-50 lineup uh, the, as well, which was really, really good to see. Um, so yeah, th- I would say that that's one of the main conferences I've seen, which was very impressive in terms of the, the way, the way, how diverse the lineup was, the fact that it was split up and also because they provided a lot of mentorship and guidance to their community speakers. Absolutely. And so I'm also curious about your personal experiences. We touched on this subject a little bit here and there, um, and we took it kind of from, women in tech SEO to the kind of current state of the industry. And I'd love to also, you know, make your personal experiences a bit more visible and a bit more heard. So how have you, of course, only what you're comfortable sharing with, but how have you personally faced um, the conscious and unconscious biases in the community and in your career? I've definitely had, uh, I had a client previously where um, I was their main, I was the main tech SEO manager on on that, and I I provided recommendations. You know, it was very it, it was something I worked really really hard on, and um, and the there was we had so much back and forth afterwards where he wasn't quite convinced with some of the stuff I was recommending. He he started sending me search engine journal articles from the year 2010 on how some of this stuff is contradictive, you know, and so forth, and. Up till that point, I wasn't thinking bias. I wasn't thinking anything. I was just thinking difficult client. Um, I go on holiday for uh, for two weeks to get married. I come back and they've put 
my white male colleague on the account instead. Um, and that person is sharing exactly my same recommendations, my same work, my same everything. The client is responding completely different. Yep, this is great. This is great stuff. Yep, yeah, yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I was just like, what just happened? Um, it wasn't addressed. There's clearly bias. There, he's, he clearly wasn't comfortable be, being given recommendations by someone like me. And, you know, nothing changed in the recommendations. It was exactly the same. It was just delivered by someone else that he was more comfortable to have it delivered by. But I would say just other than that, I mean, within our industry, like right now I work in house and the amount of meetings I'm added to where it's just all white male engineers. And there's a level of uncomfort there because, you know, here you are and you're the SEO expert and you're, you're needing to be loud and you're needing to be assertive and you're needing to, you know, get your point across. And you're usually a blocker because they want to get stuff done, but you're saying, no, you can't do it this way because that's not going to work. And it is really uncomfortable because you don't have that level of backup as well. The, the, the lack of representation generally when it comes to uh, product teams, engineering teams, um, senior stakeholders in the business, uh, like you, you just get it all the time. And, and for me, it's then problematic because who, who do I look up to, right? Because if I don't see myself represented in, in senior positions, if I don't see myself represented on speaker stages, then I'm not going to feel comfortable to put myself forward. And that's such an important point that you touched on because one important success factor in SEO is to be heard and to evangelize SEO. And even further, you often have to sell a very uncertain um, catalog of recommendations. I mean, sure, there is some certainty you can provide, but you cannot guarantee anything in SEO. Uh, and at the same time, just that influence that evangelization within a company as an in-house person or even as an agency with their clients is so important. Uh, and so I can, I can imagine that when you even fight against stereotypes and biases, that this makes it probably double as hard. Mm -hmm. um, have you found any tools or any kind of methods or frameworks to, um, to apply in those situations as a woman or as a part of a minority group? Yeah, I, that's such a good question. I mean, I wouldn't say that I found like specific frameworks or processes, maybe because I haven't looked for them, but things I've noticed in my own like day to day is to ensure I'm assertive in my language, remove the words, words like just remove, replace, I think with, I know it's, it's so many things that are every time I send an email before I send it out, I reread it and I go through all the terminology I've used and I'm like, nope. Do I really need to say that sentence using all of these words? You know, you always start with, I'm really sorry to be bringing this up, but you know, nope, you can just discard all of this. So it's this idea of how to, how to make sure that you're more assertive and you're more confident in what you're saying. Um, even if deep down inside, like you, your, your stomach hurts and you're super anxious and you're super worried, but it, you cannot come across that way because you will be eaten up alive. <laughs> and if, if, if you don't display that confidence, then you're going to have even more trouble in terms of getting stuff done. And then, you know, just taking a lot of deep breath and it, it, sometimes it gets really, really difficult and you should just go for a walk um, it's, it's so important. There are some meetings that you get out of and you're like, whoa, like, I cannot believe, you know, what was said, what just happened, you know, but you just have to kind of collect yourself and you have to make sure that you're not appearing emotional, but at the same time, you're not being aggressive, but, 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 you know, it's all these labels that, uh, that never really resonate with, with men, with men, it's, you know, this person is so confident, they know what they're doing and they're so passionate about it, right? With women, it's, whoa, she's being super emotional. She's being really sensitive. Um, you know, that was a little bit aggressive. You know, there's always that. Um, so yeah, I would say that's, that's my one thing. It's just kind of reading over what you're about to say, reading over what you're about to send, making sure that you're assertive, making sure that you're coming off as confident. To be very clear about that, I don't think that's your problem to fix. Mm -hmm. right as as a woman or as a as a as a part of a minority it's not you know you, you don't you're not responsible for the problem uh, but i'm sure there are some workarounds that that help here and there as as you know we're trying to to change um the situation of inequality and biases so i just wanted to to point that out and about you personally i mean you're you're a technical seo and uh, i saw on your site that um 
you wrote something about your work that says the bigger and messier a site is, the happier you are. Can you tell yeah. me a little bit about, you know, what you enjoy in technical SEO and um, why you picked that field to specialize in for yourself? Yeah, definitely. So I studied computer engineering. Uh, that was my degree. And and then I did, I moved to the, that was back when I was in Egypt. I'm, I'm from Egypt originally. And then I moved to the UK like seven years ago and I did like a master's degree in IT. And so it was, uh, SEO was just this, it was this right in between, right? It was like this mix between, you know, business and marketing and, and computing. And it was just this perfect in between. And I, I joined an agency and I kind of started doing it and I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed what I was doing. I was so curious. There's just so much that was happening. There was so much to learn. There was so much to pick up and, and I got the hang of it quite easily. And I, and I really enjoyed it. it it was for me, it was, especially when I was agency side, I was like, you know, you get all of these different clients with all of these different websites, with all of these different issues. And it was just so engaging and interesting. And yeah, I would say the main thing that I found over time that I enjoy doing is, you know, properly auditing websites that are massive, that have tons of problems, tons of issues, you know, aggregator sites, marketplace sites, um, e-commerce sites, you know, those type of, of websites, because there's just so much to do with them and there's so much to fix with them and it never kind of ends. Um, so that that's, yeah, that's kind of the bit that I enjoy doing the most. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's a, it is a fascinating field uh, and there's a lot to discover. I, 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 I can, so that resonates with, with me a lot. Um, and I'm also curious about your experience um, coming from Egypt to the UK. What was that like? Yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. It was, I mean, I love the UK now. I definitely, it, it is my home. Like that's how, that's how I feel about it. And uh, at the beginning it was, everything felt so new. I didn't really, yeah, I, I, I didn't have family or anything here when I moved and I had to kind of learn all these things. I think I moved here when I was 21 must've been. Um, and it, it was just, and the weather was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> the food was weird and <laughs> there was just so much I had to pick up on but I've you know I it, it was different when I started it was because I started as a student so it was okay because we had a lot of international students so it was it felt quite diverse initially and then afterwards I moved to London which is super diverse I, I never really I wouldn't say I ever felt out of place um it was it was something that I I got used to quite quickly and I've I've always enjoyed living in the UK and you also wanted to become an astronaut as a kid, I read. I was yeah. curious, what, why, what inspired you to become an astronaut? Where did I write that? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, I'm an wow. SEO. Yeah, yeah, I was, that was definitely my, I had all of these um, like picture thingies, every single planet back, back when uh, Pluto was also a planet because it was nine <laughs> planets back then. And they were these massive cards of what our planet pictures looked like. And then they had all of these information behind them. I loved them. I had them like hung up on my room. And yeah, that was like my main thing. It's so funny because now I am scared of everything. I'm terrified of roller coasters. <laughs> I hate um, landing and takeoff of flights. So I'm not really sure how I ever wanted to be an astronaut that, yeah. I was going to ask what's, what stopped you, but that makes a lot of sense. There's probably a lot of uh shaking uh, for astronauts but that's so interesting uh i think i think what people wanted to become as a, as a child can say a lot about how they see the world nowadays and how they got to uh work in the field that they are working in so do you see any similarities between your wish of becoming an astronaut and, and technical seo no <laughs> <laughs> no not really i mean yeah it wasn't my interest in science, I guess, maybe potentially, because that got me through like engineering school and, and so on. But yeah, not, not really. It did quite change quite quickly. I initially wanted to be an astronaut and then I wanted to be a teacher. And then I stuck with that for a little bit. And then I wanted to be a mathematician when I watched A Beautiful Mind. And it was, you know, I had all these phases. Um, but yeah, not never knew I was going to wind up doing tech SEO. <laughs> That's fair. I can see a little bit of all of these three professions in what you do right now. Um, one last question that I'm very curious about is how do you see the, the Black Lives Matter movements here in the U.S. and the... the um, the, the rise against equality? 
I think it's sad that we uh, we have had to give it a label and we have had to do a movement just for to get people's attention finally. Um, I think it's really, really important that there's a lot of awareness about it now and a lot of people are speaking about it, but it's only the first step. Like there is so much momentum that still needs to be built and there's so much that needs to be done. And it needs to be one of those things that are regularly being talked about and regularly being discussed until there's no need for it anymore, which will probably take a really, really long time, unfortunately. But the fact that there's a lot of awareness about it now and it's it's on the forefront of everyone's mind, we just all need to work together to make sure it continues to be on the forefront of everyone's mind. Um, I'm one of the first people who raised their hand up when the conversation started. I took a look at some of our lineups and yeah, sure, women in tech SEO, but how diverse are our own lineups when it comes to, you know, amplifying more voices of, of women who are, um, who are from, you know, minority backgrounds. I need to do so much more on that as well. So I think it's kind of on all of us to really start to take this seriously and for it not to just be a seasonal thing, but for it to be a constant conversation and a, and a constant, you know, voice of change, something that we always have in the forefront of our minds. We all have a responsibility here. Mm -hmm. I think you, you really hit that one on the head. Um, Arich, where can people find and follow you and the Women in Tech SEO project? Yeah, so Women in Tech SEO, we've got womenintechseo.com and on there you'll have links to our Facebook group, our Slack community, um, our Twitter handle is at Tech SEO Women. Uh, we're on Instagram as well. I think that's Women in Tech SEO. I'm not so great with Instagram. I try my best. Um, and then for myself, I'm mainly on Twitter. So I'm Arij underscore Abu Ali. So yeah, more than happy. My DMs are open. If anyone has any questions at any time, you know, I'm, I'm always more than happy to connect with new people. Arich, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your honest experience and opinion. And thank you so much for everything you do uh, to help women and to help all sorts of people. So I really appreciate you and your time. And I thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. And thanks again for inviting me. Really appreciate it. Three, two, one.